How's it going, guys? I've got all my DeWalt Tough System toolboxes out in the workshop. I've had these boxes over a year now, and uh, in this video, I'm going to let you know how I'm getting on with them. And there's also a couple of cheeky upgrades that anyone with one of these boxes is going to want to pay attention and check out. Now, I bought this system because I was getting increasingly frustrated with sustainers. Really neat to stack away, great to carry into the job, but you increasingly find you tool that you wanted was always at the bottom of the stack of sustainers whereas with this system i've specifically just gone for drawers and wherever they are in the stack you can always open up your drawer and you've got all your tools in there organized ready to go now a few little things to note with these toolboxes they're only going to make your life easier if you have some form of tool organization inside them so whether you make plywood inserts to suit your tools or you have drawer dividers or something like that but it works really well to have every tool having its own space within the drawer and also with something like the shadow foam it's great that you know i know my jigsaw isn't in this toolbox just by clearly seeing the green that's left there because it's missing so if you've got accessories like this that you've taken out and left on the job somewhere. A quick look in the box and you can see if something is missing, which is really, really good. But anyway, I've done a video on all that. It's on the channel. I'll link that down below in the description. And you can check out that process of changing over and doing some cutting on the shadow foam and stuff. So one year on, how are they holding up? So yeah, on a durability front, they, they've been fantastic. None of the latches, which I thought might be a weak point of them, have been a problem at all. They all latch absolutely perfectly still. Draw slides are smooth as ever. There's no problems with them at all breaking. I've caught a couple of these a few times with uh, carrying stuff past them, and the plastic is incredibly strong. There's a little bit of a mod where you swap the, the component that comes on the top of the box for this handle. And the first time I bought one to try and swap it out, I didn't realise how it came together. So I tried to butcher the bit that was in here out of the box. Let me tell you, it was incredibly difficult to try and break this plastic. It is some strong gear. The toolbox that's probably had the most weight in it is this drill bits one. It's just under 20 kilos in weight. So this one has had what I would call is max weight for these toolboxes. You wouldn't want to carry an awful lot more and stack it in your van and uh, it's been absolutely fine just get that up on the bench here and have a look underneath it the feet that it sits on the floor with there's no damage at all to them and that's been scrubbed around on concrete quite a lot and carried in and out of my van an awful lot of times so like slid in over the shelving unit in terms of workflow with these boxes they're bloody brilliant i could not recommend them more for when you're working in a small room, you can stack them all up in one corner and then still access every single tool. And it's really easy to get a tool out, use it and put it away. And I was very careful when I put this lot together that every tool that I carry in these boxes, I made sure that everything that I used with that tool was in there with it. So like the jigsaw, you've got your spare blades, CXS, you've got the chucks, um, something like the hammer drill. I've got a little bag with the raw plugs in and all my drill bits in there as well, sit down under the drill. So if I'm going to a job and I know I need my hammer drill, all of them bits are gonna be in the box. All I need to do is open it up, check that it's in there, which I can easily see because of the, the shadow foam tells me if it's missing or not. And I know I'm gonna be all right for that job. I've got all my gear with me. I am an affiliate for shadow foam. So if you're interested in getting some, I've got a discount code, which is down below the video in the description and you'll get some money off if you place an order with them using that code. In terms of how that is holding up, it's probably the most used boxes are these marking and chisels boxes. So um, pretty good to be fair. I mean, something like that where I poked the um, mitre clamps in the foam just open-ended like that. It's, it's not really worn it at all. I'd say that's, that's gonna last me a very long time. Nothing's sort of rounding over or abrading an awful lot. So really good. The squares and stuff, I'm working on a green oak at the minute. So it's all out of the toolboxes down in the barn, but it's all still pretty clean and crisp and anything that sort of sits in nice and tightly. 
is uh, still holding up fairly well. This one wasn't my best shadow foaming, but something like that plane, it, it comes out and you know, it's got built up with stuff in it. It's just how toolboxes get. But I've not been through these and made them look perfect before this video. This is as it comes off my van and uh, how it will be if you met me in the street and opened up the toolbox and that just gets lobbed in there. And you know, that foam is lasting, it's looking good and I'm really pleased with it. If I want a chisel or anything that I know in the that is in that chisel drawer to open it up and while I'm opening it up I know where it the location of it and where it's going to be I just go to it take it out and I've got it it's it's so good so something I didn't show on the previous video when I did the conversion was this box here I did it after the video because I didn't have a solution for it at the time but I ended up butchering the middle bar out of this toolbox and oh yeah, I've had to make quite a lot of modifications in order to get this TS55 to sit in this toolbox, which was quite risky considering these boxes are about £120 a piece to take a brand new one and hacksaw these sides off and then cut the bottom out of a drawer and chisel all the seals off around the top is quite a risk to take. But I was prepared to do it because the workflow in having this tool or these two tools in a box like this is far worth it. It was worth the risk to try anyway. So yeah, that's how I've done it. And like I said earlier, I've got everything I need associated with these two tools in this box. So TS55, it doesn't really need spare batteries unless you're using it an awful lot, but I've got four batteries in there. So two spares and two on the machine to run with for a start and the associated little items there. I had to reinforce the drawer after I cut it open with some bits of plywood and stuff, but it does fit in there and it slides in under that seal. It doesn't actually touch to be fair, it slides out and it's absolutely fine. I've also got the planer in there and that's quite a big thing. That was in a SIS 3 when I had the Festool boxes. It's a big unit to try and fit in a toolbox, especially alongside another tool. So that toolbox is saving me an awful lot of space compared to the equivalent sustainers. But I've got that in there. I've got my battery that operates it, spare blades, and I've also got underneath there in that little pad, the spare blades for the TS55. So that just slots back in like so, and it's all in there. Nice and safe, nothing can come out really, unless you tip the toolbox upside down. I think the other two boxes that I didn't show would have been these ones. So I managed to get uh, a couple of sets of nail guns, which is the deciding influence for which brand of nail gun I was gonna use, was whether they would fit in these drawer boxes. So they sit in there, you can grab them with one hand. And underneath, I've got all the nails. I made a little tray for the middle that stores all the different size brand and uh, 23 gauge nails that I might use. And it's all sat in there in one drawer. Like I say, you can get straight to it. And the other box is this three drawer one, which I've filled with my screw boxes. So there's a B and Q, I think it's B and Q organizer box that I already had with all my stainless screws in that I realized them little tote boxes from that fitted really well in here. I've just lined the outside with some foam. So I've got all my side screws in every every length, in every width. So I've got three and a half and four in that bottom one, and then I've got the threes, the four and a halfs, and the fives in here. Like I say, every width, every length that I need screw is in this box. It's really, really handy. This is not one you want to be tipping upside down. And in the top, I had to buy some proper tote trays to suit these really long concrete screws. Various bits and bobs of fitting kit that I use all the time on site in this one. If you're a tradesman used to screw boxes, you, you're gonna realize how handy that is when you have it compared to getting your screw box out of the van, opening the lid on it, you know, and it being in the way of your workplace. They're always in the way. Someone always treads on them or kicks them over. And then at the end of the day, you go to pick them up and someone's not latched it and they fly open and all your screws go everywhere. So you're probably thinking there's no negatives to the boxes, right? The wobble's not so much of a problem. 
when you just have one box stacked on top of the other. But it's more of an issue when you've got, when you type for space, you want as many of these boxes stacked on top of each other in the corner of a room so your tools are nearby and that's what they're for. That's, that's the selling point of these boxes for me is that all your tools are accessible. You don't need to move it again, but you can get them out of the way of your workspace. So you put five or six of these high in the corner of the room, you open your drawer, and then it's all over the place. And look at that, it's not acceptable. And I even think if one of these clips failed, the box might even fall off when it's at that angle. So it's, it's kind of not safe. And it's the worst thing about it. Well, the main negative was, as you can see in this clip, that the when you stack the two boxes together, or even worse, when you stack four or five on top of each other, you get a really high degree of wobble in the toolboxes because they don't sit properly together. They tend to clip together right in the center and the front and the backs of the, of the toolbox is not supported in any way. After releasing that last video, one of the viewers actually got in touch and said, I've come up with a solution to that wobble on them boxes. Let me send you some and let me know what you think. So a bit of back and forth with the designing and we've finally come up with a really neat way of stopping the wobble on these boxes. And what it is, is a little plastic insert that clips in this bit here. We've made them so they click in and they're not gonna get lost. And then when you stack them together, compared to the old ones which wobble, the new ones with the clips in place are really nice and solid. And it makes a massive difference when they're four high or even higher stacked in the corner of a room. Not having that wobble is just fantastic. So anyone with one of these boxes is gonna find that really interesting. He's got no plans to make them, doesn't want to get involved in making and selling them. But yeah, just comment below if you really, really want some of them, then I might be able to help you out with getting some. The other thing he sent me is these really cool clips that go onto the bottom of a, a mounting board. So I recently fitted these to a set of wheels. I reused the old set of wheels I had been using and that I'd bodged together. I disassembled them, used the casters and put these clips in place on the baseboard. You just screw them down to whatever surface you want to mount the boxes to and then that allows you to locate the feet of the box into a set position within that clip and they also work great because they fit back to back and then that gives you the right offset to the back of the toolboxes of each other so that's allowed me to make a much better job of this trolley base for four toolboxes then i've got this basic top that i put together last year that just clips onto the top of that boxes. Gives me a nice work area to work above my tools. So I can be working on there and I tend to put my hand tools, my drills and my jigsaw underneath this workbench. And then they're the type of tools you use while you're on the bench, grab your square or whatever, close your drawer, use it, and then put it straight back. Rather than finding another flat surface to put that tool on and forgetting about it for the rest of the day, you put it straight back so when you need it again, you know where it is, it's in your drawer. And it's a really nice way and really nice flow of working when you're on site. So a couple of useful upgrades there for anyone that's interested. One thing I've found that's tricky with these boxes, they do get heavy if you're putting a lot of stuff in them. It depends, you've got to be a bit careful how much you put in them. I've, I think I've got 10 of them now. So I just dedicate 10 minutes at either end of the day to dragging the tools out because invariably you're going to get every tool out every carpenter you speak to is like you just need every tool out every time you do anything so i just say 10 minutes at the start of the day carry all these boxes out to wherever i'm working you've got them out whether you use them or not but it, it just gives you like a mental plus at the start of the day to know that if you do need that weird tool that you didn't think you would need it's then not a negative thought that you've got to go and fetch it out of the van and probably out in the rain and take your boots off, etc., etc. It's um, it's there and ready. So 10 minutes at the start of the day, carry them in. Same at the end of the day, carry them out and you're done. Uh, love the side hands. So I tend to carry them one at a time now. And I love the fact that they, they can be flipped out and you can carry them still with the, the handle in. You just grip them. You know, just to get through a doorway that's slightly narrower, you don't need to have them fully out to carry them. You can carry them with them in, which works really well. Top handles are great for when you just want to move one out of the way quickly. 
I'll leave the link to the part number for them in the description box below. And yeah, these little inserts on the top, really worthwhile. So if you're interested in them, like I say, leave a comment below and we'll see if we can sort something out. But thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, I will reply to them in this, this, if I see a video comment on this with a question about these boxes, I will reply to them. I'm nothing to do with DeWalt. I've got no interest in promoting DeWalt at all. Wanted draw boxes and their draw boxes suited the size of tools that I was going to be fitting in them. And that's why I've gone with the DeWalt system. But like I say, I am an affiliate for the Shadow Foam and you'll get a little discount if you use my code Bradshaw, which I'll put down below as well with the link. And to be fair, I couldn't recommend it enough. Really, really good gear. Um, I thought it was a little bit gimmicky when I was first doing it, thinking it wasn't going to last, but having them tools, having them all have a price and with a different colour inside to outside really does make a difference when you're leaving somewhere. I've, I've saved myself from losing quite a few tools, like little hand tools, um, just by opening the boxes up and checking they're all there before I leave. So really good bit of kit. So yeah, hope that helps someone and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, started. First night leaving the workshop in the dark. <laughs>